In Washington state today, U.S. researchers tested the first experimental coronavirus vaccine, starting off with a worldwide hunt for protection, even as the pandemic continues to grow. I want to bring in Dr. John Brownstein now, Chief Innovation Officer at Boston's Children's Hospital. Dr. Brownstein, thanks so much for joining us. Of course. So the group tested today has four healthy volunteers who will be monitored over a period of time. Can you explain what this process will look like and how those people will be tracked? Right, so we're at the early phases of this vaccine trial, right? So phase one, meaning small group of people are gonna be evaluating for how they react, how well they do, if potentially there's some efficacy, also some early information about safety. But we have to remember, this is a really small uh, trial that will eventually lead to, to more participants, but we're still so early in evaluating this vaccine. It's incredibly exciting. Vaccines are a big backbone of public health and we should be striving. But again, we're still many months out from having something that we can really deploy to the public. It's still incredibly early. I hear you saying many months out, but if these tests prove to be successful, how soon could the country expect a rollout of the vaccine? So th the vaccine that we're looking at is an incredibly modern type of vaccine. It's based on RNA. It's not the traditional way of building a vaccine. So we're going as fast as humanly possible. But the problem is that we're still, you know, with phase two and three, we're still going to have to test the, the, the efficacy, but also the safety. Um, it's so important that we get this vaccine right. Um, and so that's going to lead us to probably a year to 18 months before we can really have this vaccine well past, the, especially the first wave of this epidemic as it's unfolding across the country. And we know that states are now taking testing into their own hands. Is there a benefit to spreading out the resources or should there just be one overarching test? No, I mean, I think the reality is we need all hands on deck on testing. Of course, there's the commercial labs, there's hospitals. Many people are now deploying tests. We need to have a direct understanding of what's happening in communities across the country so that we can really deploy the resources properly. So, no, I think the idea is to have as diverse number uh, of groups sort of working towards this as possible. And, and last question for you, as people start to work from home and continue to yeah. wash their hands, what else can people do to, to try to flatten the curve? Right. So the idea is all about social distancing, right? So limiting your, your grouping with other people, staying at home. Of course, we're going to depend on those that are recovering, right? So those that actually had the virus and recovered, they can play an incredible role in actually being active members of society as other people are quarantined inside. So we'll have to remember those recovered as well. I mean, at the end of the day, we're trying to protect our health systems from getting completely overrun so we can take care of the sickest patients. All right, Dr. John Brownstein, thank you so much for joining us. We appreciate that.